OK, so we're going to calculate the volume of something called a spherical cap, which is just the object obtained by taking a sphere and having a flat planar cut through it like this. And we're going to characterise this as we've got our sphere has radius r, and the spherical cap has a perpendicular height h here. And we can calculate the volume by doing this as a volume of revolution, or you might call this the disk method, where we can imagine we've got the curve which would define a circle in 2D. So let's say we've got part of this curve x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And then if we were to rotate this around the y-axis, this would define a sphere. And then we could just take this as, first of all, we'd have r would be the height here, and we'd have r going across here as well. And then we'd be going up to, in order for this height here to be h, we'd be going to, this would need to be r minus h on the y-axis. And then we can define this volume of revolution using an integral. So just to explain briefly why we use an integral for this, if you imagine instead of doing an integral where we take lots of little rectangular strips, we're now going to do an integral where instead of rectangles we've got lots of small cylinders. So these cylinders, as we make them smaller and smaller, would add up and form the volume of the shape we're interested in. So what integral are we going to take? Well, we can think of the volume of one of these infinitesimally small cylinders. I've just drawn this one a little bit bigger so we can see its height here, we could say, is going to be dh, and its radius is going to be, we could just call this capital R, so we don't confuse it with the radius of the circle. So the volume of the cylinder is just pi r squared times this dh figure. But then remember that a capital R here, the radius of our cylinder on this picture, would just be the x-coordinate at that point. So we could write r is actually equal to x. So then the integral that we're going to work with is going to be the integral of pi r squared dh, or pi x squared, and then our infinitesimal vertical change, this dh, this is just moving up and down in the y direction, so our dh is actually a dy here. So what would this look like for this circle? We've got x squared plus y squared is r squared, and we're going between r minus h and r, so we're going to go the integral from r minus h up to r of pi x squared dy. So we write the pi on the outside, we've got x squared, but we could rewrite this as r squared minus y squared. And then this will allow us, this becomes nice to integrate now with respect to y. So if we integrate this with respect to y, we get pi times, first of all, just r squared y, and then minus a third y cubed, evaluated at r and then at r minus h. So if we substitute in r, first of all, we've got pi times r cubed minus a third r cubed. And then for the r minus h terms, we take away r squared times r minus h, and then we would take away the negative, so plus a third times r minus h, all cubed. So all of this is in brackets multiplied by the pi. So if we just expand the brackets, we'll see there's going to be a lot of nice cancellation now. So r cubed minus a third r cubed minus r cubed plus r squared h, and then we've got plus a third, so if we expand the triple brackets here, we get r cubed minus 3r squared h plus 3rh squared, and finally minus h cubed. This is all still in the brackets being multiplied by pi. So we can just read off what's some nice cancellation here, the r cubed and the minus r cubed. We've also got a positive a third r cubed and negative a third r cubed, which cancel. And we've even got here r squared h, and we've got take away 3r squared h times a third, so these two would even cancel with each other as well. So we get quite a nice term in the end, we've just got pi times a third, so we've got pi over 3 times 3r h squared minus h cubed. And then we can even factorise this a little bit, we get quite a nice formula then of pi h squared over 3 multiplied by 3r minus h. So this works on the picture. I've drawn this so that we have a what you could call a minor spherical cap, so one that's less than half the sphere. But there's nothing stopping us here from having a different scenario where our h could actually be bigger than r. So if the height were to go all the way down to here, for example, then on our picture with the x and y axis, just like before, we would have this would be r up here. We'd go down to negative r on the y axis here, and we'd just be doing our integral effectively of this curve going down here, so from y equals r down to, in order for this height to be h here, this would still be r minus h, it would just be a negative value. So we could do exactly the same integral from r minus h up to r, 
and all of these calculations would still be valid. So this would actually work then. We've got a nice formula which works for all spherical caps. And this actually allows us to find the volume of another object called a spherical sector. So we can think of this as analogous to, like in 2D, where you have a circle could have a segment, would be this part, so this would be analogous to our spherical cap from before, whereas a spherical sector would be analogous to the circle sector, which would include the segment, but it also includes everything else going to the centre here. So what we've essentially got for our spherical sector is we've got the spherical cap on top, and then we've also got this cone shape underneath going down to the centre. So we can calculate the volume of this just because we already know the volume of the spherical cap, and then we just need to also do the volume of the cone. So the volume of a cone in general is a third times pi times the radius squared times the height. So on the picture here, the radius is the radius of this circle at the base, and the height would be this. So if I just draw out a copy of this right angled triangle a little bit bigger so we can label this, we've got, first of all, this length here is going from the centre of our sphere to the outside, so this is r, the radius of the sphere. And then we've also got the radius of the sphere going from here up to the top, so this length would be r minus h. And remember, this is also the height of our cone, so we could also say this is equal to our capital H. And then the radius of the circle in our cone we can say is capital R. So when we plug this into our formula, we get a third times pi r squared times h is going to be a third times pi. So r squared here, we can just do a little bit of Pythagoras, r squared plus r minus h squared is r squared. So we get capital R squared is going to be r squared minus r minus h all squared. So we get r squared minus r squared plus 2rh minus h squared. And then we can even factorise this. You can see the r squareds cancel here and we can factor out an h, so we get h times 2r minus h. So this is equal to our capital R squared, so we can just put in here h times 2r minus h. And we also still need to multiply by the capital H here, so we still multiply as well by r minus h. And then if we expand the brackets here, we've still got a third pi times h, and then expanding all of this we get 2r squared, we get minus r times h, and we get another minus 2 times r times h, so minus 3rh, and then finally we've got plus h squared. And then this is the volume of our cone, so then if we want the total volume of our spherical sector, we just need to add the volume of the spherical cap. So the volume, if we just call this v then, is going to be, we've got pi times h squared over 3, 3r minus h for the spherical cap, and then we've also got a pi h over 3, or a third pi h, multiplied by this bracket for the cone. And when we add these together, you can see there's a nice factorization. They've both got pi h over 3 in common. So if we take this out as a common factor, we've got pi h over 3, and then for this first one we need to multiply the 3r minus h by h, so we get 3rh minus h squared, and then for the second bracket we've just got plus 2r squared minus 3rh plus h squared. So again, we get some really satisfying cancellation here. The h squareds cancel and the 3rh's cancel as well. So we get a really beautiful formula in the end for the volume of our spherical sector, but we get 2 pi times h times r squared, all divided by 3. And this would actually work as well if we have a major sector as well as a minor sector. So we've drawn this where h is less than r, but just to try and illustrate this, if we had a case where h was bigger than r, we'd be in a bit of a different situation where, if I just label on h here as bigger than r, so this would be the height of our spherical sector, the volume of the spherical cap would actually be too big, because the spherical sector would only include everything on the outside, so it wouldn't include the volume of the cone. So we would actually have to do the volume of the spherical cap and then subtract the volume of the cone, rather than like here where we added the volume of the cone. So in the calculation, what we effectively did was we had we added the volume of the cone, and we had here the r squared was h times 2r minus h, but the height of the cone is slightly different now. Instead of being r minus h, we think we've got the radius here, and h is this total height here, so we've now got h minus r instead of r minus h. So this would change in our calculations. Effectively, instead of adding something which has got plus h times 2r minus h in it, we're now going to subtract something 
and if we were to follow these calculations where our capital R squared this would be h minus 2r instead of h. So we would take away h times h minus 2r. But you can see these two calculations are effectively the same because if you're subtracting something negative this is the same as adding h times 2r minus h. So you can go through that in a little bit more detail if you're interested but subtracting this cone with a height of h minus r is equivalent to adding the cone of where we've got the height is r minus h in the previous example. So this really beautiful formula does work for both minor and major spherical sectors.